Hi Intune friends, in today's video we're going to extend inventory, a fairly new feature depending on when you're watching this video, but in November in 2024. So you know if we go to device and we go to a Windows device, you're going to see a new uh, um, item if you click on the machine depending on when you see this. So normally we get all our inventory here from hardware. So we get, you see here it's missing CPU. I can't tell which CPU I have here. I can see which windows, I can see storage, but I got really no data about CPU, which would have been useful back when we had Windows 10 and wanted to know if the CPU would work for uh, Windows 11. But you see here, this one is new. Again, depending on when you see this video. Resource Explorer, cool. But it says no data on everything. And here we have the CPU. So we got no data. And that's going to stay like that. You can read more here if you click on read more. So we were just on the device here. So let's enable this in this probably short video. So we go devices. Well, first we are at intune.microsoft.com. Devices. Then we could go directly to configuration. But this works only for Windows machines. So let's click Windows and then click configuration, then we get only for Windows. So let's create a new profile. We have a few here from previous videos, check them out. And we create a new policy. So platform, now since we stand here in the Windows one, we have only two, if not, we would have Android and everything. Uh, Windows 8 and later, I hope you're not running that. Well, I hope you're running later, but not Windows uh, 1.8, but Windows 10 or later. And here, before we had only two options, settings, catalog, and template. Don't ask me uh, the, the ordering here. Normally it's alphabetic, but I couldn't figure out anyway why properties is in the middle. Middle. Maybe they actually go on catalog, catalog, template, but it ah, doesn't really matter. We want properties catalog. So let's create here. And I'm gonna call this, um, I'm gonna add all the properties just because, well, I'm testing properties, all properties, uh, adding all properties to the inventory of the Intune for Windows devices. So then here on the configuration properties, I have to choose one. So let's click here on add properties. And here again, you can choose specific one. So I would definitely want to know, uh, you know, model, and you get this one for free, or you must have that one. Regardless, of, you can uncheck this one, but as soon as you check anything, processor ID comes. So architecture, if it's 64-bit and 32-bit, well, I'm not going to go through all of these. Something I find funny here is that they have put capitals on CPU, totally support that, but lowercase on BIOS, and TPM, trusted uh, platform uh, module, is that what it stands for? Um, it's capital also, and uh, call QFE, that's for hotfixes. But if you go to their documentation here, very good site, they have listed them as a CPU with lowercase. I know it's only me who care about that, but it's the lowercase. Uh, TPM, uh, they didn't even write here, but I like that they, oh, down here they do, TPM lowercase, OS even, so they just capitalize the first letter. I know it doesn't matter, but to me it does, apparently. So I'm going to add everything. So normally you wouldn't do that, I guess. Well, you, you could add and deploy to test machine and then see which data you want. But I mean, if it's data you don't care about, you shouldn't add it. So now we have selected everything. So it refresh every 24 hours. Also, if you have been using um, uh, configuration manager, SCCM, you might have come across something called MOF file, manage object format file. And this is actually what these are. So they're gonna run some VMI query and scripts and get this data and send it back. So let's, uh, we added everything. I hope they're gonna let us do um, custom ones where we can create our own MOF file and add what we wanted. Scope tags, I put default. Assignment, that's more interesting. And this one looks a bit different. They only have search uh, before you could add, add all devices, which I didn't like anyway. So I want this for all, I have a group for all Windows devices. So I'm gonna take that one. 
and IFI devices. You could have, if you have oh, one machine, I don't want it for some reason, don't know why in this case here, you just add one more group. Let's say I didn't want it for my script test machines. I would just, which is just user, I would exclude. And you shouldn't mix user and devices anyway. So I'll remove that one. And you can add the filter and then you just remove. So fairly straightforward, you just assign. And then it is created. Now it says refresh every 24 hours. A lot gonna happen on the, the client. And if you wanna know more behind the scene what's happening, there's a guy in Holland, the Netherlands, uh, Rudy Oms, who have a great, great page. I'm gonna send them, um, here he is. I'm gonna send the link in the description of this video. He have digged in, he's amazing. He have digged into DLLs, he's capturing data and seeing behind the hood what's actually happening. So very interesting article if you really wanna dig deep down. So now we have created this one. Let's see if it shows up. I prefix it properties. I don't have that great naming. No, all properties I named it. And you can see policy type uh, property catalog. So you could have one per CPU and everything, one for TPM. And I would actually recommend that because if it fails, then you can see which one fails. If all properties and one fails, well, it's gonna be um, failing probably on one or uh, one or more. So, okay, this one is applying. So now uh, I'm gonna speak a bit more on the client, but I'm gonna pause it until the 24 hours. If not, it become a very long video. But let's take a little look on the device itself. So here we have one device. So first thing that you will notice is that you're gonna have a new folder. So under your local C and then program files, you will have a new folder, Microsoft device inventory agent. You will see that you don't have this folder if you haven't enabled this yet. And if we go in here, we have inventory service. That's actually a new service you get who run and does this and you get the log file. So right now mine haven't done anything yet, but we can restart the service. And the service, again, it can take some time before it show up. But if we go services, well, I'm gonna run as an admin. And I think it's prefix Microsoft inventory or device. Yes, there, Microsoft device inventory. So this is a totally new uh, uh, service. And you can see that because you see where it run from program files, Microsoft device inventory agent, it's exactly where we are, but then under inventory service, and then there is a file called inventory services.exe. So this one didn't exist before we enabled this um, configuration profile. So it's actually an SCP that have been sent to install that on the machine. So here we are on the machine. I'm gonna stop this service and restart it and see if um, we get some logs if some logs happen, yep, it started one here. I haven't read this log so much, but it's um, it has started. Now it start to upload and harvest. So now it's probably gonna try to start to get some of this data CPU and everything. Again, gonna take a lot of time. We can quickly go in here into inventory services. So here is the actual file run. We'll see if we can see SQLite the web page I mentioned with Rudon, he speak about this one. It's sort of a mini database. See if we see the MOF files, probably not. They are maybe not visible here. See runtime. Well, we are 64 bit native. No, nothing there. So, oh, here's the MOF file that I spoke about earlier. Let's see if we can open it in Notepad Plus, in Notepad here. Um, yeah. So it looks like this, and maybe there's gonna be some command to run. Ah, difficult to read. We don't need to understand this, but knowing that they are here, adaption. Okay, I'm curious to look at this one. So they have different namespace, device management, it add more. So this comes from, um, it's probably taken a lot from configuration manager working the same. So now I will just let this machine bake here and uh, gather 24 hours and I will retake the video. Um, there was something more I wanted to quickly speak about. Yes, if we go back to devices, 
and Windows and take one of my devices. So, so far, Resource Explorer is empty, but it's going to fill that up with the data. So we have the hardware, so it's going to be two data. The, the, um, the idea from Microsoft is to merge these two. I think they mentioned that in one of the uh, FAQ. Come from different places. We recommend using Inventory and Resource Explorer for the most up-to-date. So even Microsoft recommend using the Inventory. Um, and here's where the logs are. So pretty straightforward to enable this. And yes, you have to have a fairly recent version, but uh, if you don't have this, you have bigger problems. So I think you are good. Some other prerequisite, uh, the obvious one, I think. They need to be Intune managed, even co-managed, and Entra ID joined. Interesting, I would assume that a hybrid work work as well, even though it's written here. Hmm, interesting. Don't know, but I, I would guess. I see no reason why it would not work even for a hybrid join. And here is only for the person who create what we just did in this video. Need to create permission on the device configuration, but I'm admin, so I have everything. And for anyone to read it, just need the read permission. Fairly simple. Okay, so I pause here and come back once I see some data. Okay, back. It took about eight hours. It can take 24 hours. And now we're starting some services and try to help uh, to make it faster. But I waited one new day. So for me, it's a new day. For you, it's just a few seconds since this happened. So if we then go devices, let's go Windows again. Let's go configuration. And I name it the good name, all properties. Not so happy about that because it looks nearly like uh, when you click all properties here. It looks like all properties is um, a system or something. But okay, it succeeded on two on my machines. I thought I had only one online, where it's the same machine. Well, we don't see it there. Um, device assignment, not there either. Let's go here, all properties. Let's view report. It looks like two succeeded. It's the same machine with my user and system account. Okay, good. So that means if we go to devices now, all devices, and that device that has been online, now if we click on uh, properties, uh, no, sorry, resource explorer, we should see a lot of data. So let's see here, if we click on battery. Now this is a virtual uh, machine, a Hyper-V host. So of course, uh, battery and all, it's not the best here, it says Hyper-V. So for real machines, you probably get funnier data, but this is fine. So it was collected the, the 16th um, uh, December, which I like because if we compare that with hardware, here you got some data. Well, I guess a lot of these won't change so much, but free storage page. When was this collected? It doesn't, was it a week ago? Has it changed? So Resource Explorer at least gives some uh, uh, information. BIOS version, again, a Hyper-V, not that interesting. CPU, why not? That's interesting, not gonna change so much. And again, each one have this last updated. I go through them pretty quick. Disk space, just so you get an idea of what data you can get. So I, I enabled everything. So here we have um, uh, size in byte. It doesn't seem to say free disk space though here. So it doesn't really win over hardware there, maybe anyway. Encrypted, BitLocker, which encryption method? Only 128 bits, but that's the default. It's enough. You can have 256. Which uh, drive and all that, that's good. Logical drive. Oh, maybe here I will see um, a free space. No, disk again. No, no free. Memory. And... Also network adapter, you see they have done space for nine. I thought mine only had one. Yeah, I think it's only a one, a virtual one. So if you have more than nine, you will not see it. And there could be a lot of more than nine. If you have a VPN one, it doesn't seem to take the loop back address and stuff, but there can be a lot of virtual ones. So I, I, I think nine is totally fine, especially for a client, a server, possibly could have more. Uber's version. That's pretty nice. I wouldn't be using this so much to see exactly which OS version. I would use more this for the quality updates down here. We're coming to that. 
So this one, it's not so interesting on the Hyper-V system enclosure, but could be interesting for uh, other hardware to get, uh, well, SM, uh, SM BIOS as a tag and model and stuff. So let's see here, time zone, why not? Probably don't change so often. Uh, TPN, very interesting, obviously, especially for BitLocker and Windows 11. Video controller, why not? This one have two, again, not so interesting, Hyper-V. This one is interesting though, so quality update. So uh, this could be a pretty good one to see uh, levels. So I I have installed uh, 15 and today it's the 17. And when I started this video, it was the 16. So yeah, the, the, the pretty pretty good data. So I think we are good here. We have seen how to create the, the configuration and uh, we have seen it apply and the data you can get. I hope Microsoft will add more or even cooler, give us the possibility to create MOF files and get whatever data we want. I'll end by going to my client. And we can just look a bit under the hood again. So not so interesting on the client because we just want the data right to our console. But if we go to the registry, HK local machine, uh, should be software, and this is a Microsoft. I think it starts with a D. Uh, the, 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 the device in inventory, here it is. So maybe on the reports here, we have one per item that we choose in the configuration items. So if we take uh, CPU architecture, well, it's not going to change, right? But then you get um, all the status. 200 is uh, success. And last updated time, that's pretty nice, but that's also reported back to the console. I don't think you have to go uh, locally on the machine. Harvester result, so it's uh, positive. Last update time and uploader status when it sends it back. So you, you can go in here and look more information if needed. I don't think so, but it could be interesting to know that there is there in the registry and it's sending this back to the mothership or console. So on that note, I think I end here. Uh, the video became a bit longer than I thought, which is always the case. But thank you very much for watching and see you in another video and have a great day. Thank you very much.